Hey guys, what's up? Philip here. Imagine this. You're in a restaurant with a group of coworkers or friends. You're having a good conversation. At one point, you see, oh, perfect opportunity to tell a story. And you go into your story. The moment you start sharing that story, you see immediately how everyone stops what they're doing and they're listening into your story. You see how they're glued to every word you say. You feel how good it feels to tell that story. You love telling that story. Once you're done telling that story, you see everyone like, whoa, what just happened in there? To one of the folks comes up to you and says, wow, that was an incredible story. How did you become so good at this? Now, that scenario, my friend, that is possible. In today's video, you're gonna learn the five tips to become an incredible storyteller. But before we jump right into it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. With that, let's get started. Tip number one, find stories in your day-to-day. -day. How can you do that? How can you identify these juicy moments that could be turned into a beautiful story? Well, it's by doing an exercise every single day. The exercise is called Homework for Life. I saw that in Matthew Dick's book, Story Worthy. How does it work? Every single day you ask yourself, if I had to tell a story from today, what would I tell, right? What would be that one moment that stood out? That one moment that touched my heart? The one moment that was a little bit more special? Don't think that this has to be this life-changing big moment. No, that could be maybe an interesting conversation that you had. Maybe some small thing that annoyed you, something that touched your heart. See, doing that only for one or two minutes every single day and then noting down the date, then as well the story worth the moment and maybe if you want to, the lesson. But by doing that for an extended period, you'll see, you'll recognize first some patterns in every single day, but more importantly, you will have a pool of stories that you can start using in every single one of your conversation. It's very powerful. Next tip, save your stories. Now, let's say you've started identifying a few of these story-worthy moments. How can you make sure that you actually remember them? Because I don't know about you, but my memory is pretty bad. So I need a place where I can actually remember them. That's where the story bank comes in. Now, what's the story bank? The story bank is this magical place where you capture, classify, and remember your stories. Now, that can be any technology or platform that doesn't cause too much, let's say, friction. You can either save them electronically, let's say Google Docs, Notion, Word, or if you're kind of a dinosaur, uh, you can also put them on paper. Me personally, I prefer to put it on Google Docs. Just like that, I can access my stories anywhere, even when I'm traveling a lot. Now, what is the stuff that you should put to that story bank? A few things that you want to capture in there. Let's say you have a story. First thing you want to capture is the title. Easy, catchy title that allows you to remember that story. Second, um, use case. Where do you plan to use that story? In which situation? Third, audience. In front of which audience do you plan to share that story? Fourth, what is the main point of that story? And then last one, just a summary. A few just bullets uh, that summarize the story so that you know roughly what the story was about. Now, once you've put it down in the story bank, just let it there and maybe review it every few weeks just to remember the story. By putting your story in that story bank, you'll make sure that you will have it pretty much for the rest of your life and that you can pull it out strategically for when it matters. Next tip, internalize a story structure. Now, depending on how much experience you have, you may have come across a few story structures, maybe the hero's journey, the three-act story structure, or the five-act story structure. I know there's so many, it's overwhelming. But I guess what I want to tell you is it doesn't matter that much which one you pick. It matters really that you pick one that is relatively easy and that you stick to that structure for an extended period so that you get very, very comfortable about it so that you can start improvising any story following that structure. But in case you know no story structures at all, let me share with you my four-step story structure that I use for every single story. Now, it consists of four steps. Context, challenge, response, and result. Let's start with the first one, context. Context is about giving some rough context. 
where and when does it take place, who's the main character, and what does the main character want. It's very short. It's two to three sentences. That's it. Second step, challenge. At one point of the story, the main character should face some sort of problem or challenge. That can be anything that is substantial to that character. Now, that's really the most important part of any story. So go deep into the emotions, deep into what is really at stake here. Third step, response. Once you've introduced the challenge, how does the main character respond to that challenge? What are the actions, reactions, decision taken to overcome that problem. Now that part, feel free to simplify it a little bit. I know in real life we often have a million things that we do to overcome a problem. Here focus on the one or two crucial things that you did to overcome that problem. And then last one, result. Result, how does it turn out at the end? What is the outcome of the story? How is, let's say, the main character transformed? That's it. These are the four steps, context, challenge, response, and result. It's a very simple but very effective story structure to get you started. Next tip, practice your stories. Like any skill in life, storytelling takes practice, practice, practice. No surprise, right? But how should you practice? How you should you rehearse for your story? Well, I usually recommend to rehearse for your story two to four times. Now, why two to four times? Because that way, it's not enough to rehearse every single word of the story so that it still sounds pretty natural. But two to four times is usually enough to remember the crucial moments of the story. Now, how should you rehearse? Ideally, by speaking out loud. Speak as if you were speaking to a real audience. The more you can use the same tone, the same, let's say, body language, pauses, the more real it will feel. If you make a mistake, just continue with that story. Why? Because by owning that mistake, you learn how to deal with these moments as well for in the moments when it matters. Last step, improvise the story. Now that you're familiar with, let's say, the story structure, it's time to train your mind to improvise on the spot. Why does it matter? Well, sure, you could spend a day crafting and rehearsing a beautiful story, but after some time, you wanna train yourself that you can come up with incredible stories on the spot. Now, how do you do that? By improvising a story. First, pick a topic. That can be any topic, any random thing. You're a story worthy moment, a random object, a relationship, a location, whatever it is, pick something. Once you've picked that topic, go ahead and improvise a story following the structure that you've picked. So maybe the four step story structure. And try to go deep into some of the story elements that you know. So try to bring in some emotions, try to bring in some surprise, some visual moments. Now, the goal is not to get it perfect. No, no, don't have that expectations, but it's to have fun, right? To play with it. Improvising a story is a powerful exercise. Still today, I do that regularly. I just sit down in the morning and I ask myself, hey, what was that story worthy moment? And then I improvise a story on the spot. It is really powerful and will help you become a much better storyteller. Now, with that, that's everything that we wanted to cover today. The five tips to become a better storyteller than 99% of the people, pretty sure. Now, if you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more of that stuff, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thanks a lot for watching, ciao.